The, sometimes the lessons that we learn when we lose money or break even are better than the ones that we're mm -hmm. doing well. What I learned at that time was I thought everything I did, I touched turned to gold at that time. Like I hadn't lost yeah. money before. I hadn't really been burned. I pretty much thought I was like the golden child. I was like very, I was, I was very successful in the mastermind group. I became one of the coaches and mm -hmm. I was, I thought I couldn't fail probably. And I, I, I would probably wouldn't have said that out loud or actually believed it then, but I had no business buying that house. And in fact, it was a yeah. competitive offer with another realtor who was going to get it instead of me. Um, section eight clients. Uh, do you get like a list of people? My name is Emily and um, I just recently. Okay. Okay. Um, so think about your workflow again. You... I don't know how to do it. I know how to do it and, and I'm trying to instruct other people to, to do better in their business, but I also have to do better in my business. Hey everyone out there in YouTube land and our uh, Facebook group, Metro Detroit Off Market Real Estate Group. How you guys doing today? I hope you're all doing well. First off, if you have any questions, put them in the side chat. We'll answer them as we go. Love to have you. Uh, so, but I have this very, very special guest, Bill Allen, CEO of Seven Figure Flipping. And we, I know we got a lot, a lot of flippers here in the Metro Detroit area. We also got some buy and hold people, but they also buy, they also flip as well. So I am very, very happy and humble to have Bill Allen. We had him come to Detroit, uh, you know, for a meetup before uh, through Dean Grigowski. And if you were at that meetup, by all means, I know you know exactly what kind of value this guy adds. If you weren't, we did record some of that and put it on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and look back. I'm, I'm going to actually put the, if you're watching this on the replay, we're going to have the, the link to that video in the description. So go ahead and look into that. But without further ado, welcome Bill Allen. Bill, how are you doing today? Great, Randy. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So I'm very happy to hear hear that you 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 came on here. And uh, first off, before we get started, anyway, you have a YouTube channel as well. So uh, what's the what's the uh, name on your YouTube channel? I do. It's it's at Bill Allen REI. It's right there next to my name. We uh, it's it's my name, Bill Allen. I kind of interview awesome. some entrepreneurs in the plane. We do. We've been doing a ton of like fun shorts lately and stuff like that. So you can check it out. Yeah. And they're, they're always entertaining. I watch them all the time. So, nice. <laughs> um, so with that being said, I, how, how did you get started in real estate? Um, and give us a little bit of background of who you are, what you've done, uh, sure. you know, things like that. Sure. If you have no, no idea who I am, I've flipped and wholesaled over a thousand houses at this point. I've been doing real estate for the last 10 years. Um, but I, I was an active duty Navy pilot. So I just retired in June after 20 years. I did 15 years of active duty and five years uh, in the reserves as a, a naval aviator. I got to fly for 20 years straight. It was really awesome. And um, I, I, the way I got started is I got married and I, I was like dabbling in real estate. I had a couple rental houses. I had one rental house before I got married. I bought another one while I was engaged with my wife. Um, mm -hmm. And and I, I'd never flipped a house or even thought about flipping a house. I thought I was just going to buy 10 rental properties, make a hundred grand a year passively on my rentals and then retire from the Navy and get my pension. That was going to be, that was like my retirement plan. I never okay. met anyone in my life that made more than $150,000 a year at that point. Like I just, that was the cap. I was like, if I make 150 grand or 200 grand a year, I'll be like the richest person, person I know. And uh, I'll be a millionaire by the time I'm 65. That was like my mentality. Saved a lot of my money, was super cheap. Um, just saved 65% of my salary. Well, then I got married and then my wife was like not working. She was lip. She's from England. I met her in England. Mm -hmm. She moved back here. And so now I got to feed two people. And yeah. then we got pregnant pretty soon after we got married. And so now I'm like, 
uh-oh, I have three mouths to feed and only one of us works. So my whole right. savings plan just went in the toilet, basically. Yep. And now I was like, okay, what am I going to do here? So I was, I'm like, I got to accelerate my real estate rental buying. I got to buy more rentals. But I kept running out of money. You mentioned uh, buy and hold investors, which I, I'm all for buy and hold. I'm all for creating passive income. I love it. But I was putting a down payment down. And then, and I didn't even know I could raise other people's, I could raise money from other people. So I'd, right. I'd okay. save up for a down payment, put the down payment down and then get a loan from the bank. And I did that like yep. 10 times in a row. And so, uh, so I bought a rental and my realtor said, you know, if you sold this, you could make a lot of money. She wanted a second commission, um, which I, I get. And, yep. and I did, I fixed it up. I sold it. I made $43,000 at the time. That was half of my annual income. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this, could I do this again? And then it took me six months to find the next one, but I found another one. I fixed it up, sold it, made 45,000. So I did one flip every year for two years and okay. I made my annual income. And then I said, well, what if I could do more of these? What if I could do 12 of these a year, 15 of these a year or something like that? And I set mm -hmm. a goal to do 12. I had no idea how I was going to do it, but I really ramped up and scaled by joining a mastermind group. That's kind of getting around people. I got around my first person I'd ever met who was making a million dollars a year, like a million dollars a year. I was like, I, yeah. I said, it's not possible. There's no way. And then I got in the same room as them, sat down next to them and realized they're just like me. In fact, they don't have all the degrees that I have. They don't have mm -hmm. all the experience in the military that I had, but they didn't have this like mindset block or this barrier to money. So that's like as short as I can make it, how I kind of got yeah. started in real estate. And then from there, I started kind of scaling my business. We did 67 houses the first year. Then we did 135 the next year, then 187 the year after that. And then we did about 200 a year for the past, you know, four years or so. Wow. That is, that is, that is awesome. So um, with that, how did you, uh, is there like a horror story of a, <laughs> of a property that you, you learn multiple lessons now? For me, every deal that I've done, I've learned something from, and I'm sure that that's same thing with you, but yeah, I, is I, there I, something where everything went wrong basically? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've got a few of those. Uh, I would say the, the biggest thing that I want to point out is it's, yeah. it's e really easy to jump on this and be like, oh, like it was so easy for him. Like it happened overnight. Like, it's not yeah. true. I, I was... I was like learning in the dark for years, reading books. I, I wouldn't even buy a book. I was like going to the library, to checking yep. out books, free books, free podcasts, free everything. And uh, so it took years for, of me before I even got out there and did anything. So I hope yeah. that's not you. I hope you aren't like somebody who has to just do all that. And then it took me four and a half months after I joined that mastermind to get my first deal. So I paid $25,000 to join a program. And four and a half months into that program is when I got my first $9,900 check from wholesaling a deal. So wow. four and a half months of me doing the same thing over and over and over again and saying, being consistent, listening to my coach and taking the actions that, that I was being told to do and yep. maybe small tweaks along the way. But be, the belief that I had that I would do it was like, I was unshakable belief and I paid in full. I was like, I'm paying 25,000 because I, I'm, I'm going all in. Like this is this is yeah. the right people. This is where I want to be, and it paid off in spades. Sixty-seven houses later, but that sixty-seven houses would last for four and a half months of doing the work mm -hmm. before I got my first check. So, um, and I remember a house specifically. It, so this house was on HGTV twice. Oh, so it was on wow. uh, Beachfront Bargain Hunters or something, and then like some <laughs> other like luxury waterfront show. Um, okay. I I bought the house off market. It was a um, it was somebody who won the lottery who okay. called me because they were broke. So yeah. you, this is totally common and you know this, everybody talks about it, but they won the lottery. They won a couple million dollars, bought this house, boats, cars. I pulled mm -hmm. up, there was like a nice boat, Corvette, all stuff. They fixed it up. They put hundreds of thousands of dollars into the house and they couldn't pay their tax bill. They got a big tax bill for like 400 K. And so mm -hmm. um, they held, they held a first position mortgage. I got them to owner finance it if they got a certain amount of money back. So I had them owner mm -hmm. finance it. I brought in a lender to do a second to pay for the rest of it. I had no money in the deal. I had to do like thirty or forty thousand dollars worth of work because the work they did just wasn't that great. It, it right. Uh, it it wasn't ideal. And then um, mm -hmm. there was it, there was railroad tracks. So there was two. It was on the bay, and there was a big house, pool in the front yard, 
on this like side road and then railroad tracks. And then there was another parcel that was the waterfront like dock and area that mm -hmm. you have to walk across the railroad tracks. I had a friend who was one of my investors at the time. He wouldn't invest in it because of the railroad tracks. He's like, I'm not lending you money because of the railroad tracks. And I was like, okay, right. I put him in another deal. Didn't think anything of it. I probably should have listened to him. And uh, we fixed it up. It was a high-end property in a non-high-end area. So Pensacola is not, doesn't have a lot of really high-end houses, you know, 800,000 yep. plus houses. So very small market that I was marketing to. It, the, the market mm -hmm. wasn't really hot. This was in like 2017, probably. Okay. Right around there. So it was a still kind of a buyer's market or or like, you know, somewhere in the middle. Um, yep. So people were just, people looking at that house were looking at all the other $800,000 houses. Um, I didn't realize that price drops on an $800,000 house. Like you can't do what I did in the 250 to 300 where I was living, you know, as most of my houses. Yeah. First, first time median home price houses there. Um, 150 to 250. It's about what we were, our ARVs were. Um, mm -hmm. You can't do a $10,000 price drop. Nobody pays attention to that. So you got to do a $50,000 right. price drop. And uh, so it was just the railroad tracks, all the stuff, the hold times, the, the holding costs, eating my lunch. The contractors, mm -hmm. I was using my $150,000, $200,000 house contractors for an $800,000 house. It just all pointed to disaster. I ended up losing 70 grand on the house. Mm -hmm. um, and But nobody knew. Like my lenders didn't know. Nobody, they got paid in full. We were, we were doing a business that had about 10 transactions a month at that time. So, okay. you know, we pretty much broke even that month. So the $70,000 loss, we kind of, we had enough profitability in the company to eat that eat that hit. And I learned a yeah. lot. I pretty much lost money on all the expensive houses I've ever done. I lost 50 K <laughs> on another one, lost 30 K on another one. Have a crazy story about how I bought a house, fixed it up, sold it. And then I got sued two years later and I bought it back, turned it into an Airbnb. Then a hurricane hit it uh, two weeks before closing. And then I sold it for $300,000 less than I was going to sell it for three weeks before that to the same buyer. Wow. So it, it's all kinds of crazy stuff that happens in the real estate business. I could literally to write a book on how many people have pulled a gun on me, how many, how many times I've gotten like fleas mm -hmm. going in the houses, you've been yelled at, screamed at, all kinds of stuff. Wow. So, you know, going through all of that, I mean, yeah, it's battle scars. It's this, it's that. But I think one thing that keeps you going, you, the good thing is that you had other flips going on at the same time to be able to offset a lot of those losses. So you're, you're taking calculated risks at this moment. Is that right? So I would agree with that. Um, but honestly, even if I hadn't, the, sometimes the lessons that we learn when we lose money or break even are better than the ones that we're mm -hmm. doing well. What I learned at that time was I thought everything I did, I touched turned to gold at that time. Like I hadn't lost yeah. money before. I hadn't really been burned. I pretty much thought I was like the golden child. I was like very... I was, I was very successful in the mastermind group. I became one of the coaches and mm -hmm. I was, I thought I couldn't fail probably. And I, I, I would probably wouldn't have said that out loud or actually believed it then, but I had no business buying that house. And in fact, it was a yeah. competitive offer with another realtor who was going to get it instead of me. And I was like, I'll pay a little bit more. I'll figure this out. Like I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a ton of lessons there. But one thing that I will say, so Annie Duke is a poker player. Uh, she mm -hmm. is a phenomenal poker player, like world winning poker player. She also has okay. a PhD. And so she, uh, she wrote a book called thinking and bets and another book called how to decide. I had the opportunity mm -hmm. to interview her pro on, on my podcast probably four years ago. And then she came to our event flip Hacking live, like that same year it was mm -hmm. virtual it was in 2020. So it was almost four years ago. Now we had like a five hour conversation one day, just two and a half mm -hmm. hours before the show, before we even hit record most fascinating person I've met probably ever. And so she said something to me that I'll never forget. She said, what's the, what, how often do you lose money on houses? And I said, well, I've done, at that point I had done like 600 houses. And I was like, I've done, you know, five or 600 houses. I've probably lost money on five of them. And so she's like, okay. So like 1% of the time you've lost money. And I was like, yeah. So she's like, so when you buy a house, you have a 99% chance of making money. I was like, yeah, I guess. Like when you put it that way, yeah. And she's yeah. like, so why don't you just buy way more? And I was like, you know what? You're you're right. Like, 
And so she said when she has a 60% chance of winning a hand, mm -hmm. all she has to do is play more. All yeah. she has to do is get involved in that pot. So she's like, she's like, as a poker player, this is the most ridiculous. Like the fact that people aren't playing more and, and doing this more and growing and scaling their business is insane to her. She's like, if I had a 99% chance of winning, I would be a billionaire right now. <laughs> and so when she said that, it was a huge aha for me to try to figure out, like, I thought, I thought in the beginning, me doing just one house a year was, mm -hmm. was, was less risk. Right. And what she told me is like, that's actually more risky because now if you lose money on that house, you're a hundred percent chance of losing money that year. Right. And so that's when I started to say, okay, you know what? I can actually, I can actually, if I, if I know what I'm doing, avoid, uh, uh, you know, understand the business, understand the numbers, I'm watching it, I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. I can become really, really successful in this business and make a whole lot of money, help a whole lot of people if I learn how to grow it, this thing. Because, and even, let's just say you lost money on 10% of the houses that you did. Right. 90% chance of winning? Like, you just have to play more. You just have to get involved right. more. So, and, and, that, and what, I'm not, what I'm not saying for everyone that's watching this is to go out there and just do risky deals just to do more deals because then your, your odds are going to go way down. But right. if, you, if you develop your risk platform, like your risk tolerance, mm -hmm. and you go out there and understand your, like your, your buy range. And honestly, if yeah. I hadn't done those expensive houses at all, I'd probably be close to 100%. So Most definitely. figure out where you're buying, what your box looks like, what, what the purpose of your company is, and just go, go play more. Exactly. Follow, follow the numbers. And that's what I tell everybody is, is that no matter what your numbers is, one investor's numbers might be different from another because their risk tolerance might be a little bit more than, than say the others, but also areas vary, you know? So always, always follow the numbers. And I, I try to tell people as soon as you let emotion get involved, that's when you lose. Yep. You know? Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room And damn, what a hell of a view